everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182, on Charter Communications, as well as Abundance Television. We are syndicated. You can find us on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast, netnewsnetwork.net. Netnewsnetwork.net. How would you like to make your own laundry and dishwashing tabs? Would you like to do that? I'm going to give you some recipes for that. Okay, so this is really easy to do also. Now, you know, when you're buying these little pods, and you remember the, the, the kids who were like eating the pods? If they have to eat pods, this would be a little bit better because it doesn't have any of the weird stuff to it. But don't eat these either, okay? Um, mind you find yourself going to the bathroom a lot, if you know what I mean. Okay, so when you're buying these, you can make your own for about half that cost. And actually, I can get by even less than that. Check out that Amazon right there, okay? You'll see the website down there below where they say the advertising. And then you say check out podcast. Look at that website down there below. You can find these, um, all these items right here much cheaper then I can find them anywhere else. Okay, so cleaning, washing, and that kind of thing is just a do-it-yourselfer, okay? Now, I found this through one of my favorite websites, thecrazycouponlady.com. She's crazier than I am. So it's thecrazycouponlady.com. That's crazy with a K. So there you go. So how do you make your own? Okay, so let me tell you what you can do. Um, do it your best tabs are best for light cleaning. It's important to note that these recipes don't contain some of the commercial um, dishwashing ingredients, okay, and laundry ingredients. So while they work well for light cleaning, they may not be as effective for heavily soiled dishes and clothes, but it's a good idea to test it out in your own dishwasher and washing machine to ensure they work well for your specific needs. But I think they work good. Now, that's just what she goes on to say. Okay, now one question that was actually ask was can you use ammonia in place of vinegar the answer to that is no okay so let's see why she says this okay ammonia and vinegar are both common household cleaning agents but, but they're not interchangeable the reason being is vinegar is acidic while ammonia is alkaline so ammonia can't be can be used as a laundry booster, but it shouldn't be mixed with any other cleaning agents like bleach because it can produce some harmful fumes. You don't want to mix the two, if you know what I mean. In laundry, detergent tabs, white vinegar is often used to soften clothes anyway and remove the odors. It can also help to brighten clothes and remove stains. Ammonia doesn't have the same properties, okay? So that's why you don't want to go in that direction. It isn't typically used in do-it-yourself laundry detergent recipes. Okay, now here are a few reasons why do-it-yourself tabs aren't as firm. They're not going to be as firm, okay? Um, so if you've experienced crumbly do-it-yourself tabs, there's a few reasons why. So here's the probable probable causes. Insufficient binding agent. So detergent um, tabs require a binding agent to hold those ingredients together. This recipe here has limited binding agents, okay? So the tabs may not hold together as store-bought ones, but they're still effective. Who cares? For saving money, go for it. Incorrect proportions. Maybe you don't measure it exactly correctly. It can also affect the texture of the detergent tabs. Too much of one ingredient, too little of another one can cause the mixture to be too dry or too wet, which can actually re result in crumbly tabs. Inadequate drying time. You just couldn't wait like me. I can't wait. I want to use them now. Okay. After making detergent tabs, you've got to make sure you let them dry completely before using or storing them. Uh, if you don't give enough time, they're going to be really crumbly and they're going to break apart easily. And if that happens, just sprinkle it in there. Okay. It's the same deal. Moisture exposure. Okay. Detergent cat tabs can be sensitive to moisture, so it's important to store them in an airtight container container in a cool dry place if they're exposed to humidity or moisture they can become soft or crumbly so with some trial and error you should be able to get it down pat okay all right let's see a question was also can you use the do-it-yourself tabs laundry or, or detergent pads in a high efficiency washing machine do-it-yourself laundry detergent tabs can typically be used in a high efficiency washing machine but check the ingredients to make sure they're compatible with your machine. Okay, the high efficiency machines use less water and require specifically formulated detergents that are low sudsing. 
and quickly dissolve in water. So excessive suds can damage that machine, can also affect the cleaning performance. Now, if you're weary about those do-it-yourself tabs, place a single tab in a small load of laundry and run it through a cycle. Just do a small, the smallest you can do. If there are no issues like excessive sudsing or residue on the clothes, it's, it's likely safe to use in your machine. Now, it's always a good idea to consult the manufacturer's instructions for your specific machines and also use the detergent you plan to use to ensure compatibility and optimum performance. Because if something happens to your machine, I think you'll be okay with this. But if something happens to the machine, you're going to be able to... Um, um, to actually get get her done, you know what I mean? Okay, so seriously, let's 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 find out: Are they really cheaper than if you make them rather than buying them? Okay, so let's go ahead and put the pen out there to the calculator, okay, and your piece of paper. Okay, the cost to make laundry pods, do-it-yourself laundry pods, can can vary depending on the recipe and the cost of the ingredients in your area. So if you go to Amazon.com, you'll get them cheaper. Here's an approximate down, uh, breakdown of the cost to make a batch of 28 of those laundry deterred, or laundry pods. Okay, so the washing soda for one and a half cups of washing soda is going to cost you about 89 cents. Now remember, this is for a batch of 28 of those. Laundry soap bar is going to be about $2.80 for half a cup. Epsom salt is going to be about 21 cents for about two tablespoons. Hydrogen peroxide, about three cents um, for three tablespoons white vinegar 14 cents for about a quarter cup plus two tablespoons that's going to wind up being a dollar 28 now if you get the store brand get the store brand okay now the total cost um, is going to be about four dollars for about 28 of those laundry pods that's only going to cost you about 15 cents per pod that's if you go by what they deem the cost could be Go to my link right down there, Amazon, you'll find it cheaper. You'll just have to go up on the, the search bar to find each, each item, okay? All right, by comparison, a 25-count, 42-ounce container of Tide Ultra Oxy Powder Pods at Target is priced at $13. So that's going to be somewhere about $0.52 cents per pod. So that's $0.52 cents per pod versus $14. I'm making my own. It can save you a whole lot of money. Okay, here's how you make these pods. I'm going to give you the ingredients here, and I'm going to go by the amount, again, of the ingredients, and then I'll have to go into a break. When we come back from the break, I'm going to tell you how you make them. Okay, so you're going to need two cups of baking pounds, baking soda, not powder, baking soda, okay, the fizzy kind. You're going to need two cups of borax. You need a half cup of kosher or Epsom salt. Uh, don't use regular salt for this. It's got to be the Epsom. Okay, and then you're going to need one half cup of vinegar. You're going to need um, two ice cube trays, a large container for storage, by the way. And you'll need 15 to 20 drops of lemon essential oil, um, which is optional. Or if you'd rather it to be a soothing fragrance, you can use something like lavender. Um, lavender and citrus is really good smells that go together. Okay, uh, I, think I've got, I think I've got time to do this. Okay, so in a large bowl, you want to mix all those ingredients together. Don't be alarmed if that vinegar kind of causes a little bit of fizzing. That's perfectly normal. It'll be cool, okay? All right, now your baking soda cuts the grease. The borax acts as a disinfectant. The salt helps to reduce the effects of the hard water. And the vinegar aids in binding those ingredients plus extra cleaning power. I use vinegar on cleaning everything. In the hydroponics bucket I use, you know, it collects the water and it goes into the system, blah, blah, blah. Every time I change the water, I get no more than a quarter cup of white vinegar, the cheap store brand, and then I clean it and I'm done. Okay, I rinse it, but anyway, I clean it and I'm done. Now, the essential oils are optional, but it also makes things smell really fresh. Now, why do you think people are using the pods, you know, like um, for breeze and that kind of thing? It's not using essential oil, so you can do the same thing. It's going to cost you a fraction. You only use a fra uh, just a few drops, okay? All right, so we're talking about why it works. Now, the ingredients should start clumping once they're well combined, and I'll show you what it really needs to look like. It kind of looks like, you know, when you make homemade ice cream from snow outside, the way it kind of clumps when you're adding the, the ingredients, that's what it's going to look like. 
that way you know you're doing that now again it's going to fizz a little bit when you start combining that um, vinegar okay so then what you're going to do is firmly pack this mixture into two ice cube trays and I'll show you what that looks like. You want to firm it down in there. Use your fingers to press it down, okay? Or you could use maybe the back of a spoon or whatever. It needs to be a small spoon, so you can make sure you've got all the corners and everything there as well, okay? So there you go. That's what it looks like in the cubes. Okay, now let the cubes set in the trays for at least 24 hours. Probably wouldn't hurt to be a little bit longer than that. Place it in a dry, sunny spot for best results so like my sliding glass door faces south and that would be like the spot I put mine in okay now after 24 hours or until they're dry and hard remove them from the ice cube trays and store it in a good lidded container um, for this you wouldn't want to use your storage bags and the reason we don't want to do that is it can cause a little bit of a sweat it depends on where you store them i'd store them under the kitchen cabinet where it's nice and dry um, but anyway this is what they're going to look like when they are cubed see there make your own you're going to be saving more than half off and get get um get the you know a lot of folks don't want to use up you know their essential oils this would be the most awesome place to use your essential oils okay we must go into a commercial break we're going to be right back in just a few minutes on how to use those dishwashing detergent pods we'll be right back in just a few minutes the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and my employees and I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support. With everything going on right now, your rest is so important. That's why we're having the biggest My Pillow sale ever. Not only are my bed pillows as low as $19.98, but you can get the best body pillows ever. Regular $89.98, now only $29.98. Take your rest on the go with our Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows for only $14.98. And we have our new couch and accent pillows. They aren't just for looks. They have My Pillows patented adjustable fill that gives you that amazing My Pillow comfort. In this economy, you get the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code and you get deep discounts on body, couch, bolster pillows, and so much more, including my original bed pillows for as low as $19.98. Please order now while quantities last. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need. Toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, 
We're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blount Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Mexican restaurant located in Henniger, Alabama and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonesmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Good afternoon. We're back. My name is Donna, and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. I hope you're enjoying these little do-it-yourself things. Save yourself some money. So we've been talking about how to use dishwashing detergent or how to make dishwashing detergent tabs. And this is one of my, my, one of my favorite websites, thecrazycouponlady.com. Um, these are I like to go to her site and some of the uh, some more sites that I like to use because these are tried they're true they they they've been tested they they work okay and these are the recipes I use when I'm making my own do-it-yourself items okay so this is how you can use the dishwashing tabs and what they are about okay you want to add one tab to your dishwasher's detergent to compartment um, if you have hard water you want to add one half to one cup of vinegar to the bottom of the dishwasher to help prevent cloudy glasses and dishes and that kind of thing. Um, this recipe that we've just made should take make, take about 32, will make about 32 tabs. Um, here's a side note. So if the inside of your dishwasher is stainless steel, check the dishwasher's manual to make sure that vinegar can be safely used as a dishwashing aid. So you want to check that out as well. Okay, now Let's talk about how to make laundry detergent pods, okay? Um, so what you're going to need, first you'll need a grater, okay? The old-fashioned kind is going to be the best one. You can find them at the Dollar Tree, and for a dollar and a quarter is what they cost, and that's going to work just fine. Okay, so you want parchment paper, uh, rounded one tablespoon measuring spoon. Um, you'll need a spray bottle. You're also going to need one and a half cups of washing soda. There's a difference now. Washing soda, washing powder. You can also find it on that link right down there at Amazon, okay? And um, and by the way, when you're using that link, you're actually helping our show to be able to show more shows. Okay, so we appreciate you doing that. Um, also, one half cup of laundry soap. You, that's what you're going to have to grate, okay? It's laundry soap. You're going to grate it. You'll need two tablespoons of Epsom salts. You'll need three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. I use hydrogen peroxide when I'm cleaning my vegetables and fruits from the garden. Um, just a little quick side note. So per gallon of water, you want about one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide. Rinse your veggies and all that, and then drain them good, and then use this uh, mixture of the, um, of the hydrogen peroxide I was just telling you about. Let it set in the water for a couple of minutes, and then you'll take it out. You want to rinse one more time. You're going to have, it's going to take care of any parasites or anything like that it could possibly be on your homegrown vegetables and fruits. So there you go. All right, so we mentioned the hydrogen peroxide. That's three tablespoons. Um, one quarter cup and two tablespoons of white vinegar. Now you want to separate that, okay? So you're going to use it two different times. So you're going to have a quarter cup, and then you're going to have two tablespoons of white vinegar. Store brands just fine. You'll need some water. It didn't specify how much, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. You'll need 15 to 20 drops of essential oil, lavender, 
jasmine that kind of thing for fragrance just any kind of um now make sure it's essential oil and not candle fragrance okay because there's a huge difference in essential oil and the fragrant oil for this you're going to need a resealable bag or a container for storage okay directions you want to place the baking wash i'm sorry you want to place the washing soda your grated laundry soap and the epsom salt in a mixing bowl okay and then what you want to do is add the hydrogen peroxide to the bowl and give the ingredients a really really good stir then what you're going to do is add one quarter cup of vinegar to the bowl then you want to add your homemade pods uh, then if you want to make them smell really good you want to add the 15 to 20 drops of essential oil again such as lavender jasmine it's up to you you can even do you know lemon if that's what you'd rather have stir all the ingredients together and so the mixture should resemble wet sand or like that you know wet snow cream you know that we make outside when it snows and clump it together when you press it it's got a clump okay when you press it together so that shows you what it's going to have to look like okay now in the other picture you're going to see a grater and it's going to be grating the soap okay so let's talk about that for a second okay now for your information the washing soda and the recipe will refresh the clothes. Um, I use that Fells Napia also is really good soap and that's good for removing stains and Epsom salt will prevent the, det the detergent buildup in the washing machine. That's what I like about this website. She tells you why she does things. I'm one of those, I wanna know why. Okay, so that answers that. Hydrogen peroxide and the vinegar brighten and preserve the colors of your laundry. Okay, so here's what she says to do. Cover a cooking sheet with parchment paper. So what you're going to need is one rounded tablespoon measuring spoon to scoop the mixture out of the bowl and onto the cooking sheet. Leave a little space between each scooped out mound. It's just not for baking purposes, but for removal. It's going to make it a lot easier. Okay, now add two tablespoons of vinegar and two tablespoons of water to an empty spray bottle. And you want to spritz these pods on your cooking sheet with the solution. That's why you held back that two tablespoons of vinegar and also the two tablespoons of water. Make sure you get you a good little spritzer, okay? So you'll see what it looks like. It almost looks like you're baking cookies, okay? But you want to separate them, and that's for putting the water. And that water is going to also help harden those little pods, okay? All right, completely dry those pods at room temperature for at least eight hours. I'd leave them 24 hours, okay, uh, before you actually remove those. Um, now, one pod is good for a single load of laundry. It should make about 28 pods. You want to store them in a resealable um, plastic bag or a container with a lid. Um, and I have to tell you why to do. There's a picture right here of something that came in a packet, and it has, has this little zipper seal. I saved those. See what I'm talking about? and let's see if i can make that just a little bit bigger so you can see what i'm talking about okay so this is what the store brand right here of epsom salt that's what that came in it's got that little zipper part right up there at the top i save them and so when i'm making laundry detergent and stuff like that then i'm able to store them in that okay and it just keeps them they're going to stay there longer do you hear me say i don't throw anything away well a few things i throw away but i try to before i throw something in the trash what i like to do is think about why can I use that for just a little bit longer? Okay, all right, let's see. Now, I've got another hack for you, and this comes from the same website. I think I'm gonna have time for this. And this is how to clean the microwave without commercial cleaners. The microwaves that, the ones back in the day, 1970, whatever, when they first came out, my dad spent like a thousand dollars for mother a microwave. And I'm gonna tell you what, those things were built to last. They didn't rust. I mean, they just like an old refrigerator. If you can stand avocado green and you've got one still working, those refrigerators will outlast everything. So um, the same with the microwaves. Those are good ones. But the ones we get now, they're cheaper. And what I've noticed about them is, is they kind of rust a little bit on the inside of it. It's like almost everything is made for disposable nowadays. Who knows why? So if you've been trying to figure out some of your, how to clean some of your daily home items, um, you can think about hairbrushes and humidifiers that get overlooked during spring cleaning. I like to keep my hair, I got a bunch of hair right here, so I like to clean my brush often. Now, a dirty microwave can harbor 
also harm our bacteria, like your your hair brushes and your humidifiers and that kind of thing. And it can harbor um, harmful, harmful bacteria and germs that can cause you to be sick. Now, second, food stains and spills can leave behind some unpleasant odors affecting the taste of your food. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. Also, there can be a buildup of grime um, from using some of the commercial products, and it can affect the efficiency, again, of your microwave, and it could lead to having longer cooking times and potentially damaging that appliance. So, regularly cleaning, uh, cleaning that microwave can help ensure that it functions properly and remains a safe and hygienic kitchen appliance. Okay, now you can clean uh, stainless exterior with vinegar and a water mixture. Okay, so mine is stainless steel. Okay, so safely clean the exterior of your microwave, including the stainless steel, using equal amounts of white vinegar and water in a spray bottle. Depending on how much you have to clean, one half cup of each is about a good starting point. So you can spray the vinegar solution to, with, into a soft, lint-free cloth and then wipe the stainless steel going against the grain. Okay. Now, we love using vinegar as uh, budget-friendly and use the store brand. Okay, for that, it's going to cost you a lot less. Let's, let's tabby it up. How much is it going to cost? Okay, stainless steel cleaning wipes are a really convenient way to wipe down stainless, but they cost about 15 cents per wipe. Now, if you use one wipe per appliance, you're spending about 60 cents in total. So, a one half cup of four ounces of vinegar, which will clean all of your surfaces in one go, costs, guess what? Ten cents. Okay? That's, that's good math right there. Okay, I think we got uh, a little bit low. We've got to do a couple more. Okay, so how to clean a microwave interior. Okay, don't use ammonia. Don't use any of that stuff. So that was, first of all, it's going to leave this really lasting taste on your food. You don't want to do that. So what you can do is clean it with lemon juice. Mm -hmm. That's a very effective way to do it. So how do we do it with lemon juice? All right, so what you're going to do... <clears throat> is um, if you can use real lemons that's going to be an upper so you can clean it using steam so if your microwave is free of debris and has minimum stage you can get by with a simple simple steam clean okay it's affordable and it's real easy to do so what you're going to do for stubborn stains you can try this method right here uh, microwave a bowl um, until the water produces steam. Then you can let the steam sit in the microwave for a few minutes. Then you just wipe it down. That's all you got to do. But put some lemon juice in there. You can use fresh lemons if you want to do that or just your bottle lemon juice. It doesn't matter. It's going to make it smell really good too. Now, how to clean with lemon and vinegar for more stubborn stains. You can use that method above that we just did. But what you can do is get your bowl of water and, but you can add vinegar to the water or a few squirts of fresh lemon juice. Um, or you can use both. It doesn't matter. The acids from the vinegar or lemon juice can help break down the stuck on food and spills. You'd be amazed at how that works. It's going to be a lot less scrubbing for you. Now you can use one or the other. You can be, use both. I like to use one or the other. So if I'm going to use lemon, I just put a few squirts inside that bowl and um, put it on the microwave and just let it go for it and let it do its own thing. Now, don't let it dry on there, okay? It'll take a little bit longer to clean it off if you do that. I have just looked down, and I see I've got less than a minute left. I can't believe this. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Donna, and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications, Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Make sure you check out that podcast. That's really important, too. Netnewsnetwork.net. Lots of fantastic talk show hosts on there, and they'll tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. They're going to tell it, but it's going to be the truth, all fact-based. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later with another show, and hopefully we'll have some really awesome guests on there as well. Or some more tips.